In a previous video, we have covered what race Gothmog could actually belong to, and a lot of you suggested that he could be an orc, and I think that is due to the Peter Jackson adaptation where he is actually portrayed as an orc, but I don't think he is, simply because Sauron wouldn't have any orc into his high ranks of his army, and I'm going to explain to you all of that in this video. Before we go and spam the comment section that there are many orc leaders and many orc captains known in Middle-earth, I'm going to stop you just wait till the end of the video because I'm going to explain to you even with these leaders in mind, no orc would have been placed second in command during the Battle of the Palinor Fields. So let's go and dive into the video. There are many orc leaders known to us, just like Azok who commanded the orcs during the battle between the dwarves and orcs. Even his son Bol commanded the troops to attack the Lonely Mountain when Smaug was defeated during the Battle of the Five Armies. And during the quest of Erebor we come across the Goblin King, one who rules a goblin kingdom under the Misty Mountains. They are all leaders of an orc army. And this could happen. There are ranks even between the orcs. There will always be one who is in control. That is just the way it is, that is just the way of their primitive lives. They live in groups with one smarter orc as their leader, just like Azog or Bolk or even the Goblin King. They are all far more intelligent than the average orc. But that does not mean that Sauron trusts them. He sees the orcs as his foot soldiers, his slaves. When Sauron was gone at the end of the Second Age, and even when Morgoth was defeated at the end of the First Age, the orcs scattered and lived in smaller tribes. It was because of the will of Sauron and before him of Morgoth who kept the orcs in line. Due to this domination, their lives were reduced to an ant lifelike situation. Otherwise, when an orc tribe lived closely to another orc tribe, they would have slaughtered each other. That is just the way they are. They are reckless and would kill everything that comes in their way, even if they were orcs. During Sauron's domination, he focused their hatred and their recklessness towards the men and elves instead of each other. I'm not saying that with Sauron's control things like this could never happen, but they are extremely reduced. Things like this could still happen even in Sauron's own realm of Mordor. Just like we see when Sam was looking for Frodo and Kirithungul, the orcs used their recklessness on each other. Shagrat was ordered to bring all Frodo's belonging to the Tower of Barad-dûr, but Gorbak wanted to keep the mithril shirt for himself. And this discussion eventually led to Shagrat killing Gorbak which then eventually made an entire snowball effect and the two groups of orcs slaughtered each other. Which, if you come to think about it, was quite beneficial for Sam. The orcs were easy to control and easy to breathe and that is why Sauron wanted them for his army. Their number were extremely high and when in control they would give their lives fighting against the enemy without fleeing the battlefield. Unlike Saruman who created to Urukai, when they saw Urkenbrand, Gandalf and the Rohirrim arrive during the Battle of the Hornburg, they were scared and they ran away, which was not really a good thing because there were a lot of angry who weren't standing there. <laughs> even see later down the story when Sauron was defeated and the ring destroyed, his control of the orcs was gone and they scattered immediately. They ran away because they were clueless of what to do next and their fear grew again when they saw Aragorn and the army of the west. So in this case, the chance of one of these creatures being a very high ranking commander during the battle of the Pelennor fields with only the witch king above him is just impossible. Not only for what I just said in the last few minutes, but also because the Easterlings and even the Haradrim wouldn't take orders from any orc. They are indeed in allegiance with Sauron, but they are just too proud for that. And that is why I believe that Gothmog is not an orc. He was second in command during the Battle of the Palinor Fields. And when the Witch King fell, he regrouped all the legions, the orcs, Easterlings, Haradrim and the Variax of Count fell all under his command. So that is why I believe that no orc could be among the high ranks of the Witch King and even the mouth of Sauron. Okay, now you have my permission to spam the comment section. If you haven't seen my video about the origins of Gothmog, then I highly suggest you go watch it now. I will not only cover what we know about Gothmog, but also my thoughts on who he is, how he gained such power within the ranks of Mordor. So enjoy the next video.